jury are able to ban. see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, I, I, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. To... Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out an interesting debate titled Britain Nikwa should it be won in UK? Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's start with the video. Go. Well, with me now are Shalina Litt, a writer and a blogger who's also a child behaviour specialist. Um, I'm also joined by Sahar Al Faifi, a community activist who's also a molecular gen geneticist. And Fatima Barkatullah is the director of the Seeds of Change Muslim Women's Conference, the largest of its kind in Europe. Also here are the writer and commentator Douglas Murray, Kola Hassan, who's a lecturer and advisor on Islam, and last but not least, the writer and broadcaster Yasmin Alibi-Brown. Can I just begin with you, Fatima? Yes. 56% of British people <laughs> don't really support the wearing of the full face veil in public. They don't want it. Uh, well, I think it depends on where you where you take the poll, really, because, um, well, uh, something that I've recently launched is a project called Secrets of a Muslim Woman, and it's all about letting people know uh, why we do what we do, because I think a lot of it is to do with not really being familiar with it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, my message to the British public is that you've got nothing to fear. You know, this but is a piece of cloth. They don't feel that, though, do they? Because <coughs> elsewhere in this po poll, a majority said they don't know how to relate you know, to you know a woman why? wearing a full face veil. I think, you know, the people who have actually interacted with women who wear the face veil, people who work with them... I mean, we're in East London today. In East London, the veil is practically, you know, normal on the streets of, of East London. Uh, people who've actually interacted and worked with women who wear the veil have absolutely no problem with it. Douglas I think Murray, it's a fear of the unknown. Douglas Murray, <laughs> would you like to see the, the veil banned here? Well, I think, like a majority of British people, I think that it should be banned in public places, particularly places like courtrooms, where it's absolutely imperative that a jury are able to ban? see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, I, I, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. to impose a ban, but in principle you'd like to see one because you think in Britain in, it's unacceptable. In public buildings, in courts, in schools and places like this, absolutely, I think a ban would be uh, very sensible. In streets and so on, I think it's difficult, but it should be societally discouraged. Fatima? No, a ban, I mean, I think it's a complete overreaction. Look, the niqab has been part of the British landscape for the last 20 odd years, okay? Muslim women have been going about their business. We've got a radio presenter here, we've got a scientist, we've got talented Muslim women who've got a lot to give to this society, who've been doing so and been very sensible about it. When we need to remove our face veils, we do it. But how do you think we get through airport Sahara, security? I mean, what, what about the fact that 56% of people are saying they don't want it here? You know what, I'm not surprised at all because when you know that high profile politicians making such uh, uh, the, uh, offensive comment, comments and big fuss about it. But I am Douglas not surprised Murray is the right. public in say British they are society, against it. We show our faces. Exactly. The British society, the fabric of the British society is respecting the public freedom. We are and British. public freedom it's... is part of it. The religious what freedom. What about so I've the fact got the right that people to feel practice. uneasy? They said they don't know how to relate to women who have their faces covered. First of all, let them interact with us. Let us be open and engaging with them. This is number one. Secondly, 80% of communication in the world does not involve face-to-face. -face, what? Uh, the Twitter, what? Facebook, uh, yes, Brown. Twitter what? Facebook, Excuse phones me. doesn't involve face-to-face -face -face communications. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The issue is the problemization here. It's not existent problem. I'm sorry. All. I worked in this area for seven years, about 15 years ago, and this was not as you said, a norm. This has been imported and exported for reasons which I, we haven't got time to go into. We live in a society, in this society, and we live in a country which is very, very complicated. And to shut yourself off as if 
the rest of us are infections how and are cutting. No, no, no. How because are we, we do not. This is, the, we are, this is the meaning. We are engaged. Uh, Shalina, we are active. Shalina, uh, how are we shut off? Shalina, you have said that in engaging with your elderly white neighbour who feels uneasy, sometimes you remove the veil. When you worked with children, you yeah. removed remove the yeah, veil. Isn't, isn't that an acknowledgement yeah. that it is difficult for people to engage with, with women who have their faces covered? Yeah, I think it is. And I also honour what Douglas Murray has just said. Mm. He couldn't actually feel comfortable and... You know, I'm making a presumption here, but you couldn't say, let's do an outright ban. And that's great, because I, I understand you look at social cohesion. It's about looking at, let's isolate it. Whose discomfort are we going to favour? Because if I lift my veil, I'm then uncomfortable. And we've favoured someone's discomfort. We live in a society. And but I don't believe in the French ban. I don't. I don't think you should do that. But why but absolutely, not? If you're opposed to it, no, if you I think, think there, there is... is a very simple way of saying and a non-racist way of saying, in public institutions, everybody, whoever they are, must show their faces. It's Muslim exceptionalism that is becoming the problem. No, it's if not. If we have the same rule for everybody, and at home, on the streets, I don't want people stopped. We Okay. We accommodate religious expression in this country. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses who don't want uh, blood transfusions, uh, Sikh people who want to wear turbans. We, we make exceptions, you know, in, in certain situations. And so, look, you know, I really want to reach out to the public and say, you've got nothing to fear from us. But take up Yasmin's I was born in this country. I love point. this country. Take up Yasmin's point. But this is about exceptionalism. The, 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 take up Yasmin Alibi Brown's point about this is about exceptionalism. It, no, we, we, make, accom we accommodate, don't we, in this country, and in my country, Britain, we accommodate uh, religious expression. And we yes. do make exceptions yes. for people. And there's nothing, and that's what I so, thought. And we cannot destroy up in this country, the minorities but, and the religious belief a... in the name of equality. <laughs> but we what have... if the majority feel uncomfortable? feel uneasy and say they don't want to. I think then the onus is on us as well, isn't it? I mean, to, to actually reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this is just going one step towards that, to say to people, look, you know, we're human beings just like but, you. But if I may, if I may we have quickly, to hold that this. Course, the, uh, religious freedom is an extremely important thing. And I think most people who would agree, I hope in this yep. room, that Britain is the most tolerant place in the world to live, including as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but let's just add one thing to this, if I may. The issue of social interaction is very important, and not just to me, but obviously to a majority of the British people. Yeah. What I say tonight, what Yasmin says and other people say tonight, people see our faces, they know who said it. I'm sorry to say this, but nobody knows who you are. They can hear your name, they can't see you. That's if I enough. say something stupid on television tonight, people know it's me saying it. If you do, with all due respect, you can disappear and no one meaning? knows. No, we're the not disappearing. You what can't does see this say? Come the on. meaning of this thing is extremely important to, to address. The meaning of this thing is women are by nature dangerous to Not men and society. No, no, Therefore, no. they must be covered, they must be buried. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I cannot accept. I mean, Fatima, come back on exactly that point, because we have spoken to women who say that they cover their faces because they don't want to incite uh, passions among men. I mean, that is essentially Yasmin's point. Well, look, essentially, uh, I think, you know, that's Yasmin's opinion. No, it's not but my opinion. Yes, that it is. What it is, is your opinion? opinion. Yeah. Ask the Taliban. Ask Taliban. No. Why they're in here? Yasmin, Yasmin, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Maybe you school. haven't really met women in the car, but I would like to invite you out to my house. You know, you can see my face. We can sit together. <laughs> we can have a laugh. Yes, but and then I, I think it will change your, your opinion. Come to your house and see your face, though, could he? Um, I can assure you, I'm not going to be around. He could meet my husband. He, he, <laughs> no, no, you're you welcome. Be. You would be welcome to, you know, come can to my I, house. Hasan, Hasan, yeah, can I you ask? Can I mean, him. you used to wear yes, the niqab and then yep. changed yep. your mind. Why? Um, two main reasons. One was theological. I made some attempt to actually study the whole uh, notion of niqab in Islam, and I found it's not actually mandatory. The hijab, the headscarf, is mandatory, but the niqab is not. It's part of um, Islamic society right from the beginning. But it's not mandatory. Just go and read a little bit of Ibn, Th Ibn Kathir, for example. Yeah, I'm, I'm a scholar in training, actually, uh, so I, I do know that. Sorry, let, and finish. secondly, we have a social function in society. Mm. We are here to interact with society. We have to have a social consciousness. We have to benefit society. We have to interact with society. I realized in those three years I was a nobody. Nobody wanted to talk to me because they couldn't talk to me. I could smile until the cows come home, but nobody could see me smiling. You see, that's a very good point, isn't it? Because you say you were a nobody, yes. and yet many, many people in our poll 
disagreed with this notion that it was empowering in any way. And I bet you there were many Muslims in that survey. Most Muslims don't Yes, care I for this either. Agree with that. So, yes. so to say British as if it was you know non-Muslims, most of us, but most of us don't speak out. When I do, I get death threats. I've had emails just this well, week I am, I am from Mikabi. From Mikabi is calling me a prostitute. That's what wrong. is this freedom? that we have, no we, we can't even criticise what is not acceptable, you actually. You are free to criticise no, no, I mean, what do you make of that, 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 that making, a, as a, in a free democracy, making her views known and getting that sort that's of... That's fine, we're happy about it. I, I think the, the issue that we... But about the response that she gets. Well, that's, no, that's wrong, terrible. obviously, that's it's terrible. terrible. It's no, absolutely we, we terrible, it's that. not acceptable. Not, we, we should be able to discuss it, we should be able to talk about it, and I acknowledge that people no, feel uncomfortable. No, I think one of the problems is that the minute religion comes into it, what happens with the people who do wear the niqab often feel they are religiously superior and more pious no. than people no, who Nobody has said that they, today. Mean, nobody no, has I'm said sorry, that today. Let me just I move it out to the audience, times. if you would. Sophia, yeah. I'm right in saying you also used to wear yes, the niqab, yes. and you again decided not to. Yes, Why was that? The reason for that was that, I mean, that was a personal choice. I had an incident where uh, niqab was pulled off me and I, it, it really frightened me and I became very very anxious but I feel very strongly about some of the things that has been said here one of the things that you've been for example Yasmin you've said about you know freedom of speech and how people are threatening you I think that's completely unacceptable Islamically uh, you know we can't be responsible uh, for all the Muslims and for all the people around the world exactly. but I will say that just like you have the freedom of choice to express how you feel we have the freedom of choice I have a freedom of choice to not wear a niqab but and there she has a freedom of choice but did to you wear a niqab that you were forced out of wearing it, or did one you come to a did, different view about yeah, it? Yeah, one of the things I, I... It was a very personal choice for me. It meant a lot to me it's to not, wear the niqab. This is not shopping in Primark. This has a <laughs> meaning, and it's the meaning I'm arguing about. Yeah, it's, and actually, but, the, but that's your perception. Let me explain to you the meaning, then. Suggestion of your argument, that but these that's women don't your, know Yasmin, what their no, own choice is. That's, that's your no, perception. No, they do know, absolutely do know, which is why I'm objecting to it. Jasmine, but that's your perception. You think that this is how you... My perception... I want to be very specific, if you would. You are a psychotherapist. Yes, I am a psychotherapist. But you deal with women who are forced into wearing... The I, I know. I, I, I have, and I, another thing I would mention to, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, regarding communication, in the nine years of counselling uh, with Sakina Muslim Counselling that I, I do, all of my clients, majority of them are all phone. We do phone counselling, and and a lot of good work is done. I don't see their face. They don't see my face. So it's not really about looking at someone and really connecting with that person because we don't connect with the outer. We connect with the inner. So you think and the loneliness that you talked about <laughs> seeing <laughs> and not a single person. Person, not a single woman has said to me, my husband has forced me to wear a niqab. What the issues they do have is regards to niqab, I am fearful to go out, I'm at home, I'm lonely, I'm depressed, I, I don't even want to go out because I feel like I'm not accepted. And the other thing I really want to express is that where is the humanity? You know, at the end of the day, you know, as a woman, as a, as a person, as a human being, where's my right to be who I am? This is my identity. You have that right. That you line. have that right and you exercise it um, and so are all of the other ladies in this room. But the question is whether or not, and I, I would ask this, of, of, I think, of everyone in the room who's covered, do you think that by covering your face from everyone else in society, you are exacerbating difference or, or, or making it less bad? Marian, would, would you any of you at least recognise that you are, are you exacerbating, exacrbating a difference? Is okay, this divisive? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to look at human rights, OK? In 1998, there was the Human Rights uh, Convention, OK? Under Article 9, it specifically says, we all have the freedom of expression, we have the freedom of belief, we have the freedom of so many things that, you know, like in this country, but I thought... Great, Marianne, like, on great Douglas I just, Murray's I... point, sorry, on Douglas Murray's point, that this is, you know, it, do you understand that many people feel this is divisive? It is a curtain between well, you and the rest of society. Well, to be quite frank, I think people are free to feel how they want. It but, does, I don't care I just, how you I feel. It's there really, is something... No, 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 wait. Really and truly, it's about my human rights. My human right, I am allowed to cover. You don't have to agree. Just very briefly on the Could point I... that, that many people in the survey said that they feel unease, they feel uncomfortable, they well, feel anxious. Well, to be anxious. quite frank, I feel like that towards emos, but well, that's can I, can all right. I just point out, well, can I just right. point out, there is something fundamentally ludicrous about somebody dressed as you are talking the language of modern human rights. Absolutely. Well, to be fundamentally ludicrous. That's, that's in your mind. That's in your mind. Co 
Abdullah Hassan. This, this, this lady is constantly talking about rights. As a Muslim, you should know that responsibility is In there duty. as well. You have a responsibility to society around you. Exactly. I'm, I'm, a, just I'm a community organiser, I'm a scientist, I am engaged Majma. with the community, I mean, so I'm not point? isolated. You have a responsibility. I, I Sorry, one second. You have a responsibility Sorry. in wider society. Well, obviously, obviously speaking, as a Muslim woman right now, you know, all this talk about there being no, uh, uh, there being a fear of us, well, fear stems from ignorance. For them to be fearful, they need to understand us and we need to understand them. Obviously, as British citizens, we do understand them. We were raised in British, school, British schools. We were, uh, some of us go to university here, we work here. We understand the British culture, but do you really understand the Islamic culture? But pardon me, you that's not the role. You can't possibly understand the British culture because there's been hundreds of years. And my mother's generation, because I too am a Muslim, my mother's generation, they were beaten, bullied and burnt because they wanted to get rid of all of this and be seen as proper equals. You're betraying that history. And this country fought for hum well, women's no, rights. Everywhere. And you've now I'm taken sorry. us back to the I'm dark sorry. ages. I'm sorry, but can I just um, take it from Shabita? Yes. And you are a doctor yes. within and the NHS. Yes. Yes. One second, please. Yes. You are a doctor within the... Excuse Arabia. me, can we all listen to each other? Um, you're a doctor in the NHS. Yes, I am. And obviously that is one of the very public places where a ban, you know, if it were to be considered, that yeah. well, is where it would be First of all, I would like to say that calling for a ban uh, on niqab in NHS is um, actually uh, talking about an issue that does not really exist. Because uh, me and my friends, a lot of uh, have been contacting a lot of doctors all across the four countries of the United Kingdom, and none of them have ever come across a doctor who actually observed the face whale within NHS or even a nurse. Exactly. So uh, I, I don't really see uh, uh, that why an issue that does not really exist is actually being addressed. Mm -hmm. There is no one or no doctor or a nurse who actually wears the niqab in NHS, just very, even very myself, that point, because... Though. Isn't that an acknowledgement that there is a difficulty for many people that patients no, would find No, it's not actually like that because I am not given a choice to wear it within NHS. When um, it's, I know it as a fact that if I wear my face well and go for, to a job interview, I will never be taken up for a job. How is it, how is it to ask, you, you all here, how is it that you say it's an absolutely fundamental, you have to wear it, it's a right, it's a necessity upon you, but yet you say you go through an airport and it doesn't matter if you lift it. Is it so negotiable? In France, many of the women who said we, will, we cannot go out if we don't wear it have taken it off. Can I, can I yep. just say, Shalina, that, you know, there is a place where we have the right to exercise our right. And if this was a school or a playground, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the bullies are winning here. There is a majority of people who have the um, power and resources to put out there an image about the niqab. I teach in schools and I said to a young bunch of, group, of, of children, I said to them, if somebody came into your school, a boy, and he had nail varnish on and he had high heels on, you know, and you've seen him getting bullied, would you defend his right to be the way he was? Or would you ask him to change the way that he's dressed? Now, this is what I'm saying is, I said that I respected the fact that in context, you said in a courtroom, in the classroom, or in, the, in public settings mm. where there are people Shall who have got very... mixed opinions, that we should have policies and procedures to... that control these things. But being in Britain, Sh I'm proud Shalina, to be British. Just very briefly, can I ask you, Saha, that mean I can many do, of the women, as much as I want to, many of the women who came forward to talk to us today yeah. are very young. And actually, one of the questions that I think a lot of people ask is, you know, we've looked at Afghanistan and we've heard stories of women who have burnt the face veil and are terrified of the prospect of having to wear it again. Yeah. And they just don't understand how young women in Britain want to wear it here. Very briefly, if you can. Well, I started wearing the niqab at a young age, and the reason is, is after a research, it's a, sp a long spiritual journey, I found out that when I wear the niqab, I'll be closer to God, I'll be, uh, uh, I'll be is an act of worship, is an mm. act of modesty, and is liberating and dignifying. And since then, I've never changed my mind. And although, although my parents, uh, my, my mom, my sister, 
don't wear it. It's but, me. It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course. just about you exercising of your course. choice. Yes, the way other fine. people feel about that should be of some concern to but you. But you know, these but feelings are coming from naked. negative prejudices. We, we have you coming you from don't want men's opinions. No. You don't want men's opinions. I'm sorry. We are okay, going to have to end it there. No, I'm really sorry. I the only man I'm Everybody, sorry you don't want to hear men's opinions. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm afraid that is all we've got time for, though. Many more people wanted to speak. You can see all the reports that we've done this week on Channel 4 News on Britain's Nick Hub on our website. But back to you, John. Jackie, thank you. I think uh, this, this is really, really enlightening. This is really uh, very educative. Oh, I got to know a lot of new things today because from my own perspective, from my own perspective and views, I always think uh, the, the in Islam that the ladies, the women, uh, the, the wear the hijab and the niqab so they can be closer to God and at the same time is their uh, way of dressing in order to prevent, uh, prevent men from harming them. But I'm, to, I'm hearing a different, a different thing in this video. Uh, you can see one of uh, the lady that was debating. She actually said she she totally feels like uh, those putting on putting on uh, the niqab, covering themselves. It's like the, they feel those eyes closer to them. Those eyes closer to them are having some sort of infection. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, the the Muslim lady in this debate, uh, what they kept saying is that uh, is their right is their right to to uh, since is their right to uh, uh, dress however they want to dress, and they have freedom of religion, they have freedom of speech. At the same time, they have the freedom to to dress however they deem fit. And according to them, based on what they have said, they said uh, wearing wearing uh, a niqab is dignifying. It draws them closer to God. Is their personal opinion. And I think from Douglas Murray's point that you don't always have to consider your own consider your own feeling. Uh, consider your own feeling. You also have to consider other people's opinion. Also consider other people's feeling because. Sometimes, you know, you communicating with someone and seeing the person covered, covered, sometimes the communication might not be effective. The communication might not be effective. And I think one of uh, the lady, the Muslim lady, she, she said uh, communication is not always by face-to-face. -face. That's a lot of people communicate through Facebook. A lot of people communicate through Twitter. A lot of people communicate to through a phone call that you don't actually need to see the face of the person uh, for communication to be effective. I think, uh, I for one, I believe uh, in order, sometimes in order for communication to be effective, I think uh, there's a need for you to see, see the face of the person you are communicating with. If the person, you know, sometimes when you are trying to uh, talk to someone and uh, you are looking straight at the person, you see the person expression, you see the person expression. If the person is, uh, if the person is angry, you know. If the person is, uh, is, uh, is smiling, you know. But when you are not seeing, when you are not seeing, uh, uh, the person's expression, sometimes you might be saying something that that really hurts the person. But because you are not seeing, uh, you are not seeing the person expression, you don't know how the person feel about what you are saying. So I, for one, I believe just like Douglas Murray has rightly say, I believe. In order for communication to be effective, you need to see the face of the person you are coming. You need to see the face of the person you are communicating with. And from Douglas Murray's point, that uh, uh it thinks uh the niqab should be uh should be bound uh uh in public places uh like like the courtroom, like school, and other places, and it should also uh be discouraged. Uh, it should also be discouraged. And I, I kind of uh, relate with Douglas Murray point, and I, I think, I think in public places like courtroom, uh, people have to see your face. People have to see your face, not just the courtroom, not just the courtroom. Even in schools, when, uh, in schools, when, uh, when teachers are teaching or when the lecturers are lecturing, most especially, uh, in schools, when the teachers are teaching, 
you know, sometimes they need to see your expression. Uh, some teachers, they need to see your expressions to really know, to really know if, if you understand what they are teaching. Because sometimes some students might be afraid, might be afraid to ask the teacher, to, might be afraid to ask the teacher's question. But when the teacher is looking straight directly at the student, the teacher can easily, uh, can easily tell if, if, if they understand what is teaching or if he need to explain himself better so the students can understand, so the students can understand better. And uh, the, the matured lady among them uh, 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 also gave a point that you wearing any cap uh, is like, uh, you, uh, it's like you feel, you feel uh, 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 the people around you, the, uh, they are infectious, that, you, uh, that they are having some diseases or the other. I, I think I kind of, I kind of relate, uh, relate uh, to, to our point. Uh, just like uh, uh, I think uh, when uh, the other Muslim lady also said that everybody have their own personal opinion. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to make yourself uncomfortable in order to uh, please someone. You don't have to make yourself uncomfortable in order to please someone. And I think uh, a point, a point is also correct. But I would like to narrow it down to what Douglas Murray said that. You don't have to consider only your feeling. You also have to consider the feeling of others. You don't have to consider only your feeling that because it makes you comfortable, then you feel that you feel there's no need, there's no need to take it off. And the other Muslim lady who happens to be uh, who happens to be a lecturer, she said wearing a niqab is is it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory, and she feels uh for 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 she feels for the time she she have been she have been she have been wearing it that uh, uh she she was a nobody that a lot of people don't know her but right a lot of people don't know her and I feel what she said is hundred percent correct you covering your face uh you covering your face when people are communicating to you they don't know you cause cause uh, uh they don't know you cause you, you are covered so I feel in order for communication to be effective people need to. People need to see your face. That's just my own personal opinion. So when you are smiling, they know when you are smiling. When you are when you are when you are not happy, they know you are not happy. When you are angry, they know you are angry. Just like when someone try when someone say 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 a word to you and the person uh look at your facial expression, the person can really can tell if you are happy, if you are angry or you are happy. So the person know how to how to uh, uh go about the communication. Wow, I've really learned a lot from, 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 from this video. I hope you also do. So keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.